appeal for a catch down the leg side. Immediately, interesting approach from Mark Greatbatch. Well, there's a bit of tension out there. Greatbatch is certainly... Well, he's not going to waste any time. Definitely off the pad, but the Australians, they're up. So there's a bit of tension out there. Well, that's why that might be four wide. Yes, it will be. So that's a rough one from McGrath, and New Zealand's inning starts with four wides. Well, this seemed a bit off the... Went with the swing and the seam, and Healy didn't get near it. Went a long way. Ah! LBW appeal and turned down. Well, that's the first one he's got straight. And it was pretty straight, too. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing the replay, the back of New Zealand replay on this. This looked just initially very, very close. It pitched in line. Well... Mark Greatbatch may be lucky to be there. He's got the benefit of the doubt from the umpire. Good judgment from Mark Greatbatch. The end of the first over, New Zealand four without loss. Over number two, Paul Rifle. Gets the edge and falls just short, I think, of Mark Taylor. The Australians aren't having much luck this morning. His rifle, he goes away from the left-hander and he's getting the outside edge and that just falls in front and to the left of Taylor. Douglas plays nicely this time through mid-wicket. First runs off the bat in the game. And they settle for two. And that was a good confident shot by Mark Douglas. His rifle just drifting into the legs of Douglas. Well, they certainly need hats today at uh, Eden Park. Some people go to a lot of trouble, though, John, don't they? Yes. Watermelon, wasn't it? Yeah! They got him? Yes, they have. Douglas does get a nick finally. And Rifle, who struggled throughout the over, has Douglas caught behind. Well, this is not a great shot. It's not a judicious choice of shot. He went across. That's the area he wants to be bowling to the left-hander. And that's a big nick. It was not quite a half volley. And in a little way, that's a soft dismissal. It's very disappointing for Douglas. Eight for one in the fourth over, New Zealand. New Zealand captain Ken Rutherford comes out to join Mark Greatbatch. The figures of for Rutherford show you that he's vastly experienced at this level. His 118th game. Yep. Angling down leg side. That's beaten Healy. I think it may have come from the pad. It may be runs. No, leg buys. So they all count. Just the batsman doesn't get the credit. Well, they're bonus runs, really. And Rifle will be disappointed with this. Always angling down leg side. And just, as you say, off the side of the pad. And just too wide for Ian Healy. So that's the end of another over. It's 19 for one. With the crowd building up, particularly on that eastern terrace. And that's the boisterous one. Brave man that goes up there. Yeah. Well, oh, that's that man up inside the circle. He was there to stop it, and he should have done it. But he hasn't done it at all as it runs away for four. Made a mess of it. Well, this is what I'm talking about. If you, McGrath's pace, any deflection that's fine is going to go quickly off the edge of the bat. And he's played it intentionally down there, but I don't really think he expected that he'd get four. And that, uh, I think, judging by the reaction of the bowler and the captain and a few others, was a pretty disappointing effort from Shane Warne. Wait, wait, no. Good ball to finish off with. No run from that. And it's 25 for one. Now rifle continues. Oh. Well, Greatbatch is gone this time, and it's straight up in the air, and he should be caught. McGraw waits, and that's the end of Mark Greatbatch. Yes, I think there seemed to be just some confusion today with him, not quite deciding which way he was going to play. And he had faced 33 balls, and on the 34th, trying to hit it over the top and getting that top edge. 
and he tried to hit it onside. The line was wrong. It was outside, just outside off stump. It flew way down to Glenn McGrath at, uh, at third man. And great match goes. And so New Zealand at 29 for two. Stephen Fleming's highest score, 90, which was made on debut. 450s, an average which is climbing. Shimmering heat here in Auckland today. It's a beautiful day. Well, that's very wide. Gives Rutherford exactly what he wants, and it's uh, two bounces into the boundary behind point. Well, no sweepers out yet because we're still in the first 15 overs, and that really was a hand me out. Short and wide. And really, it was clobbered away by Rutherford. Just angled the bat to hit it over the top of the inner ring and square enough to defeat third man. He did pretty well to reach it. It was a long way wide, wasn't it? Well, he's gone again, and he's dropped. The brothers will not be happy. Steve Waugh in the gully, normally an outstanding fielder, and Rutherford has a life on 12. And once again, the Australian fielding not being as they would wish. That's wide, further up, and slashed by Rutherford, and the saving grace for him is that he probably hit it hard enough. Stephen Fleming's had just a couple of deliveries so far. One from Rifle, one from Warren. War. And, and he's out as he caught. He's got a fine edge, so the third ball's enough. And Mark War has success, which eluded him earlier. And he's delighted because Stephen Fleming is a danger player for New Zealand. And he's out for a duck. Well, limited overs being looking to whack width. The width's there. It's a little early on. Big loud nick. And not a big deflection, but uh, a big enough one for Fleming to go. And so New Zealand 35 for three. New batsman, and he's in in the 14th over, so much sooner than New Zealand would have wished. And he's got his skipper out there to give some advice, but the scorecard doesn't look happy. 30-odd overs in which to play in innings. And so he's probably going to look to play himself in and not go for the big shots too early. Oh, he's been dropped. He went for a big shot. And Steve War at uh, Gully, or a bit further back than that, really, has dropped him. Well, Ken's had a real fly at this. <laughs> Pretty hard, but Steve War's not having a happy time. Just didn't get over it up enough. It's the second chance he's put down this morning. In one day cricket, it's a particularly handy in, in your team makeup if you do have a batsman in your top five that can bowl. And look at those figures there. He's done the job for his side and got the important wicket of Fleming. Rutherford hauls this away on the leg side, and it's four runs. Well played. We'll see here on the BNZ replay. That's short, not too short, but Ken Rutherford in position quickly. And the ball's getting a little bit older, so it's going to come onto the bat slower. It's gave him a little bit more time to play one of his favourite shots. <laughs> Loud appeal, turned down. War has a long, hard stare. 46 for three. Shane Warne to resume. Our one word of commentators, commentators, Grant Nisbet and John Wright. Oh, dear me. Yes, trouble. The batsmen ran into each other. And Cairns had to take a wide berth. And Brian Aldridge has asked for the third umpire to make a decision here. They were all over the place, the New Zealand batsmen. Well, I hope they haven't got driver's licences. All in the wrong lane. I think he's in. For goodness. He just can't afford that sort of mix-up in the middle of a short single. That was nearly disaster. And the throw was away from the wickets, which made Healy's job of getting to the stumps. It's just a comedy of errors all round. Well, we see here, this is 
a replay, a Bank of New Zealand replay on the run out, and here we go. Well, both they had magnets or money in each other's pocket that they wanted to get at. And there's the Manhattan, and you'll see that it hasn't been steady progress this morning, and you'll note both here and here, great example of the pressure of the maiden obtaining the wicket. On both those occasions when New Zealand lost wickets, there were maidens bowled here and here, which just puts extra pressure on the batsman. Sweeping again, or oh, just dribbles back and misses the leg stump. That's a bit close. End of the over, 52 for three. <coughs> Oh, trying to swing it away. I think it hit him on the pad. And it's rolling down towards the boundary. It's going to make it. And leg by signaled. They all count. Four more. Bit lucky, perhaps. Well, extras have been very kind to New Zealand's effort this morning. And here's another four bonus runs. Rutherford using his feet to war. Trying to hit it through mid-wicket. And just clicks that front pad. And off to the fence for four. That must be a wide, surely. Well, he thought about it about four or five times, I think, Brian Aldridge, before he finally decided that it was a wide. Sure it impressed Mark War too much. But as you say, uh, John, the party really hasn't got going yet, has it? No, it's the 100th birthday party, and fortunately for the New Zealand side, they're here, but they're not really involved at the moment, as well as they might be. He's damped this one pretty fine. May's got some work to do. He dives and he's helped it in the end just over the rope. A good effort, but in the end, it's four runs. Well, this is a good shot from Cairns. He's used the width of the ball and the pace of it to get it just wide of Healy, but fine enough for it to be a very good contest with Tim May. And May does well initially, just gets away from him and over the rope. 27 overs completed, with New Zealand winning the toss, batting first. And really, they haven't got the momentum going. You can see the scorecard there that they've really struggled against some very efficient bowling from the Australians. And it's been continued by Tim May bowling his third over. Cairns is the batsman. Oh, he's caught. This time, there's no doubt about it at all. Mark Taylor gets both hands around the ball. So Cairns took the challenge. He hit with the turn, but he hit straight to Mark Taylor. Yeah, the sh frustration showing here. The ball wasn't uh, hittable over the top. And watch how the link's not quite up to him. But he decides to try and go through with it anyway and just can't get it over Mark Taylor, who's in there at mid-wicket. So Cairns goes. And New Zealand 81 for four. Shane Thompson's the new batsman coming in in the 28th over with New Zealand at 81 for four. Now, Shane Warne's going to come on from the southern end. Rutherford lofting over the circle and out to the boundary to Min Bukit. Does he get it there? Third boundary for Ken Rutherford. This is what happened uh, the other day against the Indians. When Warren bowled his first over, he went for 19 and the Indians latched on to some loose stuff early. He went for 61 in the end, but this is his return spell. He's bowled four already. Well, that's our gone in the air, and it's just short of the field. And they get a single. Tim May coming in. Was never quite going to make it. Yes, well, Tim May's not the quickest fielder in the side, but I doubt if... Yes, it bounced well in front. Well, Thompson really looks as though he's struggling to pick him. Doesn't really seem to have any plan. Oh, well, that's a brilliant catch. Warren gets the court and bold as Thompson tries to force it past him. And Shane Warren strikes New Zealand a five down now with 102 on the board in the 35th over. Well, this is a fantastic piece of bowling. Brilliant court and bowl. He had to go a long way to his right. Great athleticism. Brilliant bowling. Brilliant fielding. Shane Moore. 
Thompson out for nine. It's 102 for five. Adam Perore is the new batsman for New Zealand. 102 for five. And he comes in at a very difficult time, but he certainly has the credentials. <laughs> and Perore dri drives beautifully. And an excellent diving save by David Boone. Had it got beyond him, it would, would have gone to the fence. They got a single. It's 103 for five. Could be a bit close here. And Rutherford goes for a tumble. But in the end, the throw wasn't too flash. Here we have the fifth delivery. He's tied him down. And a brilliant catch. With a hop there. Oh, this one's in the air. Boone angling rounds. And that is the end of Ken Rutherford. So the New Zealand captain goes with his total at 46 and further trouble for New Zealand. Well, this is in total disarray for the New Zealand. A disappointment for Rutherford. He didn't get over the ball with a sweep. You'll see he either got a top edge or didn't get over. He went up and under the ball. He had to sweep down because of the boundary figure. Fieldsman, and there's the wicket. 46 from the New Zealand captain today. It's 106 for six. Your batsman replacing Ken Rutherford out there. And he's gone to the non-strikers end. We're starting a new over. It's the 37th from Shane Warne. Oh, my word, that turned again. David Boone right down in front of the number one stand. It's a fairly short boundary down there, and the wicket today is to the edge of the block nearest the number one stand, so it's not such a big hit. He's gone. Ferrari's taken. Taylor takes a brilliant reflex catch. And another one goes. Well, we've seen the Australians drop a couple, but this is sharp. It went fast. Very brilliant catch. He didn't move, didn't anticipate. And he's pleased with that one. So Perore goes. He's out for two. And we're still on the 37th over. It's 106 for seven. Well, there we are, 106 for seven. And I don't suppose uh, that fills the New Zealand followers with a great deal of confidence at the moment. Vaughan on naught, Larson on naught. Yes, Luke. Oh, there's one here. This might be tight. I think he's gone. He is. No need for the third umpire. Well, further disaster. Gavin Larson run out for naught, called through and he never looked like he was going to make it and the ball hit the stumps well i think what's happened here is justin vaughan's hit the only shot of conviction he did in the over and he thought it was worth one because it was the best shot he played but in the end it really wasn't even close was it he called gavin larson through and he had no chance of making it things just go have gone from bad to worse 106 for eight so Chris Pringle on his way out to the middle, and there are me, 106 for eight. New Zealand in tatters here at uh, Eden Park. Chris Pringle, his first ball. It's a leg by, I think, we'll find. And, oh no, it's being cancelled out. That means he doesn't play, a, didn't play a shot, so he doesn't get a run. 107 for eight. Oh, that's a wild one. And that's going to run away for four, is it? It's uh, struggling a little bit down there, but it's going to make it. See what I mean, John? Just after two deliveries, Pringle pressured him into bowling a rough one. <laughs> you read it so well, Ian. Yes, I think he's tried to bowl. That's the flipper here, and it's just got away on him. And driven back. There's a bit of a dive from Shane Wall, and he doesn't get to it, as you see, and he picks up a run. That's the end of the over. It's 112 for eight. There's the Manhattan. It's a mixed story, as you see, those uh, yellow dots. Too many of them in the first 40 overs. This is the 40th over, in fact. Oh! Bold him. Well, well flighted. And he played over the top and all round this one. And it got through and hit the stump. So New Zealand in further trouble. This more or less sums up the day, really. What a ripper for Australia. Not such a ripper for Chris Pringle. This has almost gone past the bat on the full. It's a big loopy one. 
And in the end, he's yorked himself, which is quite unusual off the spin. And no foot movement at all, so May strikes again. Pringle is gone. Looks even worse at 112 for nine. So Danny Morrison, the last man in, and at 112 for nine. At the moment, he's got one more ball to bowl. Three for 19, there we are. So his turn's been prodigious. He's been able to vary it, as John said. The flight has been impeccable. His line's been good. A big swing. Cry of catch it. I think it may have come from the pad. No response from the umpire. There's a pleading going on, but uh, umpire Dunn says no. Into the over, 114 for nine. And here's the last ball. And the Australians were convinced that the ball, which obviously came from pad, hit the bat first. Vaughan played that well. And the chance of overthrows. Healy threw at the bowler's end. McGrath wasn't interested. And it's just as well that Ricky Ponting was alert to it, otherwise overthrows could easily have resulted. And McGrath would have had further reason for being <laughs> disappointed in the day's proceedings. But Vaughan's hit that well. You see, that's what I was saying. His timing is good. The outstretched hand of Glenn McGrath. And it will be Greg Blewett to bowl the last over. Ordinarily, you would have said that Mark Taylor had miscalculated here. When the score is so low, it hardly matters. So he's going to be trying to bowl very straight and very full. Yep. Vaughan has one. He's going to have a go for two. McGrath has the ball in the air, but Morrison has uh, scootled back for a second. Good running. Yep. This time he has got it through. Might even get it to the fence. He does. Well, that's put well played, Justin Vaughan. Again, giving himself room. And he's picked the gap between backward point and the man on the boundary at third man. Giving himself room and just open the face. And that's the shortest boundary at Eden Park. And that's one of the shortest third men at Eden. <laughs> it's this one straight. They've got to put pressure on the field and go for a second. Morrison racing, and he makes it. Eight off the over so far with the ball to go. Good running. When you're backing up in a situation like this, and probably generally pinch a meter or two at the non striker's end. Give yourself a good start. Last ball of the innings. Vaughan hits it straight to the field, and they get a single. As the fieldsman Steve Waugh can't knock the stumps over. And so one run is taken, and well batted by Danny Morrison and Justin Vaughan at the end. But New Zealand really have come up well short. At the end of 50 overs, they're 137 for the loss of nine. And he's nearly out all just over the top of square leg. Great batch got up high, but not quite able to drag it in. So he's living dangerously, Greg Blewett. Just doesn't quite get it to swing enough from that line. It's middle and leg, and it didn't straighten. And Blewett... Prepared to play freely, but just got it over the top of Great Batch at square leg. He's hit that one too pretty well. Finding the gap well. He's a very strong player on the onside, Greg Blurt, and Glenn Turner showed you that Pringle is inclined to be picked off on the onside. particularly Peter when he's got such a strong offside field he's got the two slips in here the gully and then he's got uh, a couple in the covers so that's where the strength is 
slower ball is going to be caught. Blewett is caught and bowled by Pringle. The slower ball has worked, so the success for New Zealand comes in the fourth over. And a disappointed Greg Blewett, but a delighted crowd. Well, this is quite amazing, isn't it? <laughs> he, he seemed to stub the bat into the into the pitch, I think, and, and then scoop the ball up, just lollipop up off the uh, bat. Simplest of catches, 15 for one. So, a wonderful player with a magnificent record. And Greg Blewett will be very disappointed in this one. It's almost as if he completely misjudged it and just played French cricket at it. The bat seemed completely stuck, and the ball just ran off the face back to the bowler. Remarkable, really. You don't often see that, Glenn. No, it's amazing how he just, yes, will let the bat come forward enough. So in, instead of just digging it out, he's prodded forward at it. And amazing how he could uh, achieve that. Cool. Couldn't do it if, even if you tried, really. Well, out there he did. He got caught. Mark Walker gets his first. Another chase for Great Badge. Beautifully timed by War. Away backward a square with exquisite timing to the fence. Well, Glenn Turner's just been explaining how strong Mark War is on the onside, and you don't bowl in that area to this player. He's a brilliant onside player. And that's just runs in the bank for him. <laughs> Wants a short single. Taylor scrambling, but gets there. And so they get their run. It's 24 for one. Flicked away very fine by Mark War. And a real scramble for Gavin Larson. He does well. Good commitment by Larson and a lovely throw as well. Well, Morrison. Just... There's Taylor out there. You want to be there at the end. Well, that's a good uh, Yorker from Morrison. He might concede a boundary, though. Yes, he has. Great effort by Chris Pringle. And he never really was in control of that. Couldn't find it in the finish, and it trickled over the rope. Well, in this game, there's this fine line between success and failure, and Danny Morrison almost yorking Mark War. He went to work it on his favourite onside. An outside edge, and Chris Pringle, well, didn't really quite make it. Well, that's nicely played away through a square leg. That should go all the way. It got past Mark Douglas. And a war so good off the pads, it's another boundary. End of the over, 34 for one. Here the reinforcements arriving. Well, that's nicely played. That deserved to be hit, and it was. Short and wide, and Taylor dispatches it to the boundary. Well, there's nothing really but to hit a delivery like that for four, it's wide, it's short, and to a player such as Taylor's class, it's generally a boundary. Big shout for LBW. It's coming round the wicket, and the umpire turns it down. End of the over, good one too from Pringle, and it's 45 for one. Well, this is a good little battle. Shane Thompson seems to be enjoying it. I'm sure he wish he had a few more runs to defend when he was bowling at Mark War. But War is looking to get after him. Oh, he swings it away, and he's got hold of this one. One bounce over the boundary for four. There is a square leg, but he's a lot finer, miles from it, in fact. Previously using his feet, this time just staying put, Mark War, down on one knee. And the sweep played to perfection. See, that? that's the sweep where you try to hit the ball really hard. I feel the New Zealanders, when they play the sweep shot, they look for that little paddle shot, and they're in danger of really 
Well, you can get as one run if you don't hit it hard enough and you're in danger of just flipping it up or missing it all together. But there you see a positive sweep shot and really smashing the ball. Down the wicket he goes. Oh, what a lovely drive. That's four off. Straight through to the extra cover boundary. Well, Shane Thompson was enjoying the contest. I'm not sure he's enjoying it now because Mark Waugh's taken over. And this is a magnificent sh shot off an off spinner. Down the wicket, give yourself a little bit of room. And look at the power and placement there. Magnificent shot. So Mark Waugh, he can cut loose at any time. He just looks so capable. Down the wicket, big full toss and four more. Well, you can't bowl that at Mark Waugh and get away with it. Just put away. 61 for one but earlier well it isn't easy to cap them aside actually uh, on Eden Park because as you say you have to protect some very small boundaries and they're awkward boundaries to protect and that's one of them it's fairly short out there he's going to come back for two which is not bad sort of running but Chris Cairns had a fair amount of ground to cover from fine leg And there's the big Eastern Bank. Bit of uh, their own fun going on over there. The crowd has built up, but I don't suppose it's quite what New Zealand cricket would have hoped. But uh, maybe that's because uh, it wasn't known till late on Friday that New Zealand would be in the final. Always oh, swung this one away. That's four more. Well, Mark Waugh punishing Justin Vaughan. So 77 for one. Changing commentators, Glenn Turner and Peter Sharp. He's hit that very well. Mark Taylor just picked up the length and dispatched it. Efficiency, as we've seen from the Australians today, bowling, and now we're seeing it batting. He had to get down low enough to get under this one. He didn't appear to get very high. See how he crouches. Just under it and lifting it over the top. Sign of a good pitch when you're able to do that. Only just short of a length. No ball this time and Taylor loses no opportunity at all to score another boundary. Well, New Zealand can put the foot, uh, field back if they wish, but they've decided not to. Although the man at square leg has stayed out there after fetching that ball from the pickets. And as you can see, the equation suggests that Australia are very well placed. Thompson's got some work to do to cut that off, but he won't. It's too short for him. And I thought for a moment there he'd hurt himself. He's already argued with the... A hoarding down at um, the Basin Reserve. So just flicking it successfully. And just watch here, Thompson almost doing himself a mischief. It's been a real fall for the New Zealanders. Pringle went very wide that time. And Taylor getting a change of angle. Just picked it up sweetly. And two's enough for them. It's 93 for one as the over ends. Morrison back into the attack. Oh, an appeal for a catch at the wicket. A lovely catch from Perori, and I think Mark Waugh's going. He is. He didn't wait for the umpire. So Mark Waugh is denied another 50, but he's provided real entertainment for his 46. Delighted the crowd. Splendid innings from Mark Waugh. Ends to a splendid catch. But it was too, and that's a real strangle down leg side. Just a loosener from Morrison. He's rather fortunate to get that, and that's a good catch. One-handed away to his left, just getting under it. So Wall goes for 46 and 47 balls. 93 for two. But here's a man with one of the finest records in world one-day cricket. Look at that. 500s, 36 50s. So 41 times he's been past 50. And what, Glenn, what is Glenn Turner doing? 177 matches. Yes, well, he's been around a long, long time, hasn't he? And so Matt Waugh has gone. Here's the, the catch. Just to, in fact, there was no 
bat pad difficulty there. And a clean hit off the bat. Well caught by Ferrari. Yes, from that other camera angle that we saw it, it was obvious he got too far across, just trying to flick it down the leg side. And Adam Perore does very well. Oh, there's a catch from the pad. Morrison wants it from the bat. Boone's not going anywhere. And Brian Aldridge is not going to send him. Well, it looked for a moment as though it had got through him and bowled him. And the replay down the line will show you just how close. Nipping back and look too high. And then the ball is going over the top. We'll see the light here. Flick the top of the pad, so he can't expect that one. Even though uh, Boone is a short man and his pads probably match. <laughs> Maybe the telegrams arrived. It's called a singing telegram. It's the end of the over. 93 for two. Thompson having three overs and he went for 18, including 12 and one over where Mark War took three boundaries. Justin Vaughan, none for 14 from three, and Larson, none for 12 from two. So they weren't really very productive bowling changes. And Taylor hits it again, picks it up well, gets it past the inner fielder. And Douglas can just turn and watch it go into the vacant spaces out there behind square leg. It's the end of the over and 99 for two. 39 from 180 balls. It's time to bring on the lethal combination of John Wright and Grant Nisbet. And this man, Danny Morrison, has worried David Boone significantly since he's come to the wicket. Yeah. And Boone plays delightfully through mid-wicket this time. Big chase uh, for the New Zealand field. The ball might uh, not quite make it. And Ken Rutherford with a long run out, and they get three for the shot. 100 up for Australia in the 21st over. Little nick on that, is there? Well, certainly the New Zealand side thinks so. Well, I think the facial expressions tell it all. Rory and Morrison were convinced. Boone was dead pan. He's totally innocent. And unfortunately, the party started before the decision was given. Hang of out, boys. But he's not out, so the umpire's decision is final. Nicely over the top of that one. And Chris Pringle is down at a third man. That's a pretty good over from Danny Morrison. It's 107 for two. Welcome back to Eden Park. We've seen just seen a maiden over bowled by Justin Vaughan. And Danny Morrison's going to have another go. I think he's rather enjoying bowling at this stage. Not too much on it, but an opportunity to get rid of one of these world-class players. And there's a man who probably won't mind too much if he doesn't get a bat today. Steve Waugh. That's off the edge, down towards uh, third man. In fact, it'll go all the way. With Taylor pushing forward, pats Danny Morrison on the head. It wasn't a bad delivery, but it was around about through third slip. Now, the thing to notice here is, did Taylor open his face deliberately? And I think he did. And your first tendency to, is to describe it as a nick. So Australia is 25 runs away from victory here at Eden Park as we bring back John Morrison and Ian Smith. It's even the most optimistic have sort of gone a bit downhearted, haven't they? Hmm. Yeah. Trying to drum up a Mexican wave as David Boone punches it away through the offside. Quite nice looking shot. A long chase for Mark Greatbatch and a very comfortable three. Yes, a disappointing uh, climax to the one-day series, the Bank of New Zealand centenary one-day series. Oh, 
Is he gone? Yes, he is. Mark Taylor advancing down the pitch. Missed it. Adam Perori standing up. Took the bails off. So Mark Taylor, the skipper, is on his way. Well, he doesn't look all that concerned about it, Mark Taylor. But uh, in the end, it was almost a bit of suicide, really. Decided to go down and hit Vaughan over mid-off. And Perori standing up. If he misses, he was always in trouble. He did, and he was. So Mark Taylor's gone now, but he's seen his side virtually home. Gone for 44, 116 for three. Steve Hoare, the new batsman, by a profile. Look at that, 180 matches. Marvellous record. 1850s and no hundreds, and I think that's a reflection of the fact that he's always batted down the order a bit. Hard to get hundreds when you're uh, five, six, and seven. But uh, here's the dismissal, and uh, our Bank of New Zealand stump vision shows that Mark Taylor made no real effort to get back. There was a fair bit of noise coming from up on the bank, and uh, I'm not quite sure uh, why, but it's uh, probably a reflection of a long day in the sun with a few refreshments. Oh, he has a, oh, oh he's gone what a brilliant catch i didn't realize it for a moment but ken rutherford leapt up and just plucked it out of the air and steve war is gone incredibly nonchalant but very effective well the rain might have had a little bit to do with this or the thought of prospects of rain steve war's not content to just pick it up in ones and twos he was looking for the fence and ken rutherford Pretty happy to pull that one in. It was a good catch. One-handed, left-handed. Steve Waugh gone for one. 121 for four. Well, Steve Waugh gone. Rocky Ponting. To face Shane Thompson. And he's underway immediately. Pushing it out just forward a square. So uh, Shane Thompson picks up a wicket. That's the end of the over. 122 for four. Pulls this one away. Oh, that's a solid shot for four. That's a lot squarer than the previous one. So, uh, four runs. Well, this is a good shot from David Boone. Short, but not that wide, but quickly onto the back foot. And he middled that. There we are. Three to win. And that may be it. David Boone... Pushes it away into the onside. Justin Vaughan after it. And they'll come back for three. So it's all over here at Eden Park. The Australians, a comprehensive victory, beating New Zealand. New Zealand all out for 137. That was never going to be enough. And the Australians move through to 138 pretty comfortably. So a comprehensive victory, that for Australia. Four for one, three, eight in just 32 overs. They really did do it easy. Mark Taylor continued his good form. 44 from just 75 deliveries faced. Mark War, 46 from 47. He's been in wonderful form for the Australians. And David Boone continues his comeback to form, scoring 24 off just 42 deliveries.